Well, good morning, uh, church. It's great to be here today. Um, this morning, as we uh, have something a little bit different, we are having a youth service. Um, it's kind of a youth service. There's a few older people here uh, who are being involved as well, uh, but they're young at heart, and that's what really matters when it comes uh, down to it. Uh, we're really excited because a couple of weeks ago, uh, Nathan and I got to uh, go on a hike with the Vibe, uh, the Vibe Kids, um, and, you know, with everything going on in the world, it was the first time we actually got to be together and, um, you know, and, and do something like that. And so that was a really cool time, just hiking around Joe Gapper Park and uh, kicking the footy until the sun went down and, uh, and then we froze, so uh, it got pretty cold. Um, but we've got a really great uh, service today. Uh, Malachi, what's some of the things that we've got coming up? Well, we've got mixed notes coming up. Um, it's been really exciting. Um, yeah, can't wait for it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and Nathan, what else have we got coming up? Uh, we've also got Seb preaching, um, so it's you know, something to look forward to. Um, he'll be carrying on with the church's um, series from earlier in the year about there's so much more to love. Yeah, that's going to be really cool. Well, as always, we've got our youth band uh, leading us in praise and worship as well. Uh, so why don't we throw over to them and let them take it away. Welcome, guys. So glad you can be with us today. Now, the first song we're going to be doing is Running, and of course, as you guessed, it involves a little bit of running, so please get out of your seats and join us as we sing.
Ah, hello. We have been expecting you. Welcome to Nick's Nuggets. I am Nick, and this is Nugget. Now, it is really good to be back. You may remember last time we were talking about how some things change, but God's love, it never change. And you know what? Nugget, he loved the Cocoa Pops. I don't think that will ever change either. And so a couple of weeks ago, Nugget said to me, you know what? We could go on a trip and we could find where the Cocoa Pops come from. And I say, sure, why not? So we jump in the car and we go on a trip to Kellogg's World. It's very exciting. So when we get there, we see how they grow the Cocoa Pops on the trees. And then when they're ready, they pick them and they put them in these big trucks and they drive them to the Cocoa Pops factory. Then when we're walking through the Cocoa Pops factory, we see this big long line of Cocoa Pops boxes. They're just forever. And Nuggets say, no, look, they do go on forever and ever and they never stop. He's so excited. In fact, he's so excited, he's licking his lips and he's almost licking his eyes. And then I see Nugget, he walk over and he talk to the Mr. Kellogg's man. And I say, hmm, Nugget, what are you talking to the man about? And Nugget, he say to me, I got this idea for a new type of cereal. It called Nugget Pops. Hmm, I thinking, I'm not sure about that, but we will let you know. So anyway, a bit later, it's time to go home. But Nugget, he don't want to go home. He say he want to live in the Cocoa Pops factory. And he tried to jump into this giant tub of the Cocoa Pops and stay there forever. So I quickly have to grab him and hold him all the way back to the car. But then Nugget, he get a bit angry at me and he not talking to me for a little while. So later on, we're driving home, but then Nugget say to me, that he very happy that he visit the Cocoa Pop factory. Because first, when we're driving there, we're getting closer and closer. At Nugget, he's getting more and more excited. But then we get right up close, and he say, oh, this is the best thing ever. He's so excited, he want to get a picture of the Cocoa Pops factory and put it next to his bed so he can feel happy and feel safe. And I say to Nugget, you know what, Nugget? On our trip, we have some experiences which are a bit like God loves for us. And Nugget say, really? You mean God loves the Cocoa Pops too? And I say, I don't know, maybe, but that's not what I mean. When we're in the factory, we see this long line of the Cocoa Pops and it go on forever and ever. And you know, that's like God love for us. It go on forever and ever and it never stop. They're amazing. And you know, God loves us so much that he wants to keep us close to him so that we feel safe and happy too. Even more than Nugget feel when he keeps the Cocoa Pops next to him. They make him feel happy. But God, we feel even happier when we're safe to him. And then I say to Nugget, you know, when we got in the van and you got a bit angry with us, well, with me, I think that maybe you would stay angry all the way home. But, you know, then you not hold a grudge for very long. And I say, this is what God is like for us. He doesn't hold a grudge for us forever when we do something wrong. No, he forgive us because he wants to have a happy relationship again with us and with everybody. This is good. You like this nugget? Uh-huh. Oh, he learned so much. Now, don't forget, kids, only a few more days to send in the pictures so you can win the Cocoa Pops. We've still got it here to win. So next week, we will pick the winner. Don't forget, send in your pictures. And I just want to say, last weekend, we have a lovely time at the family picnic in the park. And Nugget, he want to say a special thank you to Bethany, Janali, Alexis, and Zach, for helping him have a great time on the slippery dip and the swings. He was having such a wonderful time, and he told me all about it later when we get home. Okay, thanks everybody for watching Nick Nugget. We will see you next time. Say goodbye, Nugget. Bye-bye, Nugget. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> okay, bye.
Hey guys, we are doing today's Bible reading and the first Bible reading is 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 to 13. I may speak in the languages of humans and of angels, if, but if I don't have love, I am a loud gong or a clashing cymbal. I may have the gift to speak what God has revealed, and I may understand all mysteries and have all knowledge. I may even have enough faith to move mountains, but if I don't have love, I am nothing. I may even give all, I, all that I have and give up my body to be burned, but if I don't have love, None of these things will help me. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love isn't jealous. It doesn't sing its own praises. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't think about itself. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep track of wrong. It isn't happy when injustice is done. But it is happy with the truth. Love never stops being patient, never stops believing, never stops hoping, never gives up. Love never comes to an end. There's the gift of speaking what God has revealed, but it will no longer be used. There's the gift of speaking, of, of speaking in other languages, but it will stop by itself. There's the gift of knowledge, but it will no longer be used. Our knowledge is incomplete and our ability to speak what God has revealed is incomplete. But when what is complete comes, then what is incomplete will no longer be used. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, thought like a child, and reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I no longer used childish ways. Now we see a blurred image in a mirror. Now we see, now we, then we will see very clearly. Now my knowledge is incomplete. Then I will have complete knowledge as God has complete knowledge of me. So these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the best one of these is love. Okay, and um, we're going to do the second reading, which is Matthew chapter 18, 21, verse 35. I'm now going to read Matthew chapter 18, 21 to 25. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with the servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had had to be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he had owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Please join us in prayer. Um, dear Lord, thank you for this day. Um, I just want to pray over our youth. I just want to pray that, um, I just want to thank you that we're able to um, have school holidays and some of us are, were able to spend it with friends and family. I thank you that um, we were able to reconnect. Thank you that school's returned um, and we're able to reconnect at school with all of our friends and with teachers. Um, I thank you that we're able to slowly start getting back into the normal things, Lord, um, that we're slowly be able to reconnecting with um, our families and some more of our friends and eventually soon the congregation. Lord, I just thank you for all that you're doing for us. Dear Lord, I'd like to pray over the Playford community for safety and protection. 
and that we may be able to meet again soon and join in fellowship. I'd like to pray for the people who are struggling without being able to come to church and without being able to have that face-to-face -face connection and engagement, Lord. I just pray that you're with all of us and that we'll be able to join again soon. God, I just uh, lift up this COVID-19 situation. Um, God, that it has been on our hearts and uh, a globally impacting pandemic, God, that um, I especially just pray over New South Wales and Victoria right now in this outbreak. I pray that your healing hand is just over these states. Um, I pray over the impact upon people, God, financially, socially, relationally, this uh, pandemic has affected all of us differently, but God, um, we know that you can make a way um, even in these challenging situations. Um, I just thank you that we are lucky enough to be in South Australia. I pray that our community may continue to stay safe and we may continue to just abide by these safety rules, God, and just respect one another. Um, and I just pray over... Um, not just our own country, but other countries deeply impacted that might not have the same kind of supports or structures um, to protect their communities, God. Um, I also just lift up Seb um, preaching the sermon um, today. I just pray that the word can come straight from your heart, that what he can speak is meant to be spoken to this congregation today, that it can be exactly what you want to say and it can have a really deep impact on those listening um, and I pray that we can all gain more insight and wisdom into how elaborately and deeply you love us. Um, God we lift up all these things in your name. Amen.
Good morning everyone, my name is Sebastian, I'm part of the youth team here at Playford and it is my absolute pleasure to be bringing you the word this morning. I think this whole service has been so chock full of youth that it's crazy to see the work that God is doing within our youth and I'm very excited to see how it goes um, in the coming months and years as we develop our youth team. Um, I'm very excited to be sharing the word this morning but before I start just join me for a word of prayer. Lord may the meditations of my heart words of my lips, the thoughts of my mind, may they all be acceptable in your sight. And I pray that it would not be me speaking this morning, but it would be you speaking through me as we delve more into who you are and how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you can think back with me all the way back to January 2020 BC, that's before COVID, and it's a hot day, 37 degrees-ish, and we're just, you know, coming in in our shorts and our short sleeve shirts into church and there's kids waving signs all around and it was the day that we introduced our church's theme for this year and that theme was and still is there is so much more to love now at first I was pretty puzzled by this new theme that Henry and Pete had put forward to us because it almost has a double meaning you could take it to mean there is so much more to this idea of love that the intensity in which we can love or the knowledge we have around love, there is so much more to learn about it. Or you could talk, think about there is so much more to love. There are so many more things to love. There are so many more people, places. There's so much more of God to love. You could almost take it broadly or specifically. Sort of reminds you of that verse in Ephesians when God is talking about the great heights and depths and widths of his love. And so this morning, hopefully, we can delve a little bit more into those broad and specific parts of God's love. Our first reading is beautiful. I think everyone who has ever been to a wedding has probably heard the reading we had from 1 Corinthians, so beautifully read by our youth team. It describes this character of God, this love, and it almost demystifies it because oftentimes we think about it and God's love is so large and so huge that we struggle to comprehend it. And this verse where Paul talks about the different characteristics of love, we get a better, better idea on what Christ-like love actually is. And so this morning I'm going to expand upon it a little more and share a couple of characteristics of this Christ-like love and talk a bit more about it. But I think I offer a pretty unique perspective because I'm actually a veterinary student for those who haven't, I haven't had the privilege of meeting yet. Um, I'm in my third year of studying and it's going very well. I very much enjoy it. But with veterinary studies, you get some great animal stories. So I'm going to be linking in a few animal stories as we talk about these ideas of love. My first point of God's character of love is that God's love is close. Now, I don't know if you've ever observed a herd of horses before. Bit of a change up. But you look across and there's something unique about a herd of horses. In fact, that there's not a stallion that leads, it's actually a dominant mare, a female horse that does all the bossing around. And more than that, that mare has other mares that are sort of her close friendship group. And within the whole herd, there are many mares, female horses, and their foals, their little, their little kids. And at first you look at her and it's like a meshwork of horses everywhere and they're all feeding in different spots. But when you look closer, you actually see that within each foal's radius, about 20 metres, the mum is always there. It's almost as though there's a bubble around the foal and the mare has to stay within 20 metres. 
Next time you see a herd of horses, maybe observe for yourself. But a horse, a foal might wander off a bit to go and get an extra blade of grass and might be playing with another. And the mare will move in just to keep that bubble tight and keep that 20 metres. And that's a very great picture of what God's love is. God's love is close. And I don't know whether or not we fully grasp it, but when God talks about in Leviticus, when he walks among us and will be our God and when he will be near us, or in Psalms, when the, God says, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He cries their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love us. And so this mare doesn't jump onto the foal when they wander out. No, she just keeps a close circle around and keeps her presence nearby. And with COVID changing everything that's happened in our lives, your faith may have been really impacted. It might have been that not having church on a Sunday morning has made you a bit more distant from God and you've wandered a little bit further. Or it's been just hard to connect sometimes because God's not, you know, always there on a Sunday morning when we're physically at church. But my message as well for those people is that God is still close, that he's been following in that bubble and he's been trying to stick close to you and loving you and he's never too far away. So that's my first point. God's love is close. My second point is this. God's love keeps no record of wrongs. It's right there in our scripture from this morning, from 1 Corinthians. God's love keeps no record of wrongs. And my second animal story is more of a lighthearted, funny one. I, my own dog, Levi, is a cheeky Australian shepherd of three years old. And as you can imagine, he's very much still a puppy. And one day I came home from uni and I was just exhausted. And my grandmother had very thankfully made me a lasagna. And I was told to share the lasagna with my brother. So being a good older brother, I cut it in half and put my own on the plate and put, um, put it in the microwave and put his aside and set his aside. And I sat down and ate mine. And lo and behold, my brother comes wandering out, Seb, where's my lasagna? And what had actually happened is Levi had snuck in, opened the door himself, jumped up, and without any of us seeing, he'd licked the lasagna off the plate with one foul swoop, licking it clean, and just wandered off as though nothing had happened. It looked like there was just a clean plate on the table. Now, my brother, when he found out, was absolutely furious. He started yelling at Levi. He banished him outside. He wasn't allowed to talk to any of us. We, we even fed him later. But no matter what you did, he was always jumping up, ready as though you were ready to play with him. He's not upset or tail between the legs. He was just so keen. And when we finally let him back in, he just came bounding in, jumping up on all of us, licking us, as though nothing had even happened. And once again, that's just such a beautiful picture of God's love. It doesn't hold any grudges. I know a big part of my faith and something that I've really struggled with is that when we sin or when we fall short, we have this temptation just to go through a period of mourning or a period of having our tail between our legs around God or thinking we have to be a little bit careful around God or distant around God and earn back his favour after we've done something wrong. And I think that can be yeah, quite sad and quite disheartening because Jesus didn't pay for that. He paid for us not to have three-day shipping on forgiveness. His forgiveness, when we ask for it honestly, is instant. It holds no grudges. And so when we fall short, you don't have to be upset and hate on yourself. But God's love doesn't hold any grudges. So you can be truly, truly free when you ask for forgiveness. That's my second point. My last two points about God's love are unique. I can't think of an animal example to centre them around because they're just so unnatural almost. That God's love diverges outside of what natural realms would, would permit us to be. And that's this. God's love is infinite. That's my third point. Now I've got some chocolate m and here. And there's no one around here to share with me, unfortunately, with all our COVID restrictions. But imagine for a second you had a, an infinite amount of M&Ms, an infinite amount. And you're just, you're just eating your M&Ms and you have an infinite amount and you're so happy about it. 
What if I gave you this bucket of M&Ms? How many M&Ms would you actually have? The answer is actually an infinite amount still. It hasn't changed. Even with an infinite amount of M&Ms, and I give you this bucket of M&Ms, you still have an infinite amount. And that's exactly what God's love is. If you could quantify it, it's infinite. Our reading this morning talked about God's love never failing, always persevering. And the idea of this infinite concept is that God's love goes on and on and on. It just keeps going. And so you can't ever have any more so therefore, my point is this, that God cannot love you any more than he does right now. Because his love is infinite, he cannot love you any more than he does right now. And my second point is this, my last point, is that God's forgiveness is perfect. Our second reading from Matthew talked about this servant asking for forgiveness and begging for it. And we don't know really, but it's more, it's actually a parable, an answer Jesus gave to one of his disciples who asked, how many times should I forgive someone? Was it seven, 14, 21? He was just looking for a number. Maybe someone in his life had done so many things wrong to him and he just kept doing wrongs and he's just sick of it. He wants to know a number so that once he gets past that number, he can lash out and put all his rage onto that person. But Jesus gives him a very unique answer. He says, forgive them seven times seven. Other translations say 77 times seven. So what does that mean? Does that mean we have to get out our phones, write, keep tally until we get to 49 times and then, then we can let them have it, let loose? No, it's not about that. The number seven in the Bible is actually a lot more metaphorical than we Westerners sometimes think. We think that a number is just a number, but seven in the Bible represents completion. Just like there are seven days in the week, the number seven has a great meaning of completion. In Revelation, there are seven churches. The Lord's Prayer is broken up into seven segments. The number seven is actually mentioned 735 times in the Bible, which itself is divisible by seven. Seven is this idea of completion. And so when Jesus says you should forgive someone seven times seven, he's not saying 49. He's saying you should forgive someone completely, fully completely, because there's sevens multiplied by each other. Jesus forgiving us fully and completely means that God cannot love us any less. And the combination of those two, when you understand that God's love is infinite and he can't love you anymore, combine that with the fact that God's forgiveness is fully complete and he cannot love you any less, you come to this very important point, And this is the most important point if you can take anything away from this morning. God cannot love you any more or any less than he does in this very moment. Because his love is infinite, he can't love you any more. And because his forgiveness is fully complete, he cannot love you any less. This is great news for us. It's something that's so exciting because we can live our life confident in our relationship with God, that it is present and constant and that we can not have to worry about, oh, does God love me more this day or does God love me less tomorrow? He cannot love you any more or any less. But the challenge that comes with that, that raises a bar. Because God calls us to love others like he loved us. And to love someone fully and completely, to love someone infinitely, now that's a challenge. And it's a challenge that I would leave you with this morning. God's love, how can you show it in the world that you live in? COVID has changed a lot of things, sure, but love doesn't require physical contact to work. God doesn't require physical contact to work. Think of ways that you can love people even during this time. You may feel as though 
Sunday mornings, you're not serving on worship team anymore, but you could definitely still serve somewhere else and you can love people somewhere else. So my, my points, just to summarise, are this. As we learn from the, the foals and the mares and the herd of horses, God's love is close. It's like a bubble around us and he's always present and protecting us around us. Number two, God's love keeps no record of wrongs, like Levi leafing up with the lasagna and still being just happy to see us. And last and, and most importantly, God cannot love you any more or any less than he does in this very moment because his love is infinite and his forgiveness is fully complete. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us today. Uh, it was great to have you. Uh, I trust that you've been encouraged by our young people in their uh, leading us in this service and that you've been challenged by Seb's message as well uh, that he's brought from God's Word. Uh, I pray that as this week goes forward for you, uh, it would be one that's filled with blessing uh, and that God would really 
uh, would really show himself to you and work in your life as well. So have a great week.